Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Two Set Violin. Now you may see four talented musicians here you have seen before on our channel. Alex, Tiana, Phoebe and Emma. Today's video is about debating which instrument is better. Now we have three questions, there'll be three rounds and it's really up to you guys watching to decide which instrument do you prefer and who's right, I guess. Mm. We're kind of cheating because we're like two people representing yeah, violin. Yeah, what's that about? <laughs> I'll just take your filming, Brett. You can yeah. do all this. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some bubble tea. I'll be back. I feel <laughs> ganged up against. <laughs> so I think the first question we have is, which instrument has the best repertoire? I don't know. I feel like Phoebe should demonstrate. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> can I just say, one of the most famous pieces or motives of all time yeah. was actually written for the bass, and it only needs two notes. Any beginner can play it. Isn't that's true. It? That's, yeah, okay. It's pretty epic, but is that copyright? Oh, yeah, you might have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only point I actually had for today, so. <laughs> that is a pretty epic yeah. motive. Oh no, violin, we have some pretty good stuff. We get all the melodies in orchestra, which is pretty sick. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the left hand. Actually, we do. I mean, we don't have to worry, don't have to worry about the bass line. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the left hand. But like a piano, right? Yeah, I was thinking like oh. a piano. And I was like, hang on a second, there's a lot to deal with. No, but we get all the melodies. Like yeah. A lot of nice tunes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do double basses put out violent transcriptions? Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. I mean, that's saying a lot, right? <laughs> but can I just say, Kaputsi? It's a double bass concerto. Kaputsi. Probably no one knows. <laughs> Who's Kaputsi? Um, but I heard a tuba player practicing it, and apparently they steal our repertoire. So we're not we're not that bad. No, yeah, we're player. not the lowest. Yeah. We're, not the lowest. <laughs> we're, we're like tuba still below. <laughs> she can go lower. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I will say the best version of the Tchaikovsky violin concerto I've ever heard was on a soprano saxophone. No. Just no. No. Wow. And it gets better. The orchestral part was played by an all saxophone ensemble. This so is it a was, joke, right? It is a hundred percent not a joke. <laughs> How do you play the third movement? Um, the altissimo register. That was actually one of the good things I was going to talk about the saxophone. Holy. But yeah, you can unlock a whole like another register on the saxophone and play like really stupidly high. But what about like the um, like chords? Like... Yeah. Wow, okay. I mean, that's... No, nice. but if anything, that's just demonstrating everyone's trying to take violin repertoire. Yeah. <laughs> so... Or make it better. Oh, okay. If we're going to talk about transcriptions, the saxophone is like the king of stealing repertoire. Really? When we were invented, we like missed all these great composers. So there's saxophone players who just study whatever they want. The Bach cello sweeps on tenor sax, the Paganini caprices on alto sax. Yeah. Like, basically it's just saxophone players have a little bit of like, anything you can do, I can do, do better. You, do you play Liszt in Chopin? I mean, I haven't. Okay. But do that. Okay. Oh. I feel like piano has probably like the, the biggest uh, repertoire of its own. Plus, we kind of get everyone else's repertoire as well. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. Not this just still. through transcriptions, but even like all of the amazing orchestral music. There's always transcriptions for like solo piano or piano duo or. Yeah, there's versions of everything for piano. That's true. That's, that's legit. I feel like I don't have to fight very hard for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why he's been sitting quietly in the corner. Yeah. yeah. I'm in a very similar position yeah. like Emma. We don't have too much that was written specifically for harp, especially the early stuff. Hey. Mozart, the only thing that he basically wrote for harp is the Mozart harp and flute concerto. So it's not even like a solo concerto. It is nice though. It also, is. isn't it yeah. the flute and harp concerto? Yes, possibly. Since <laughs> <laughs> even Debussy's time, the most famous piece that I guess he kind of like wrote for solo harp and string orchestra, Debussy's mm. Dances, that was actually um, composed for the chromatic harp, which is a harp that looks like this. So it has intertwined strings. It doesn't have, yeah, it doesn't have pedals. I don't know that. So it's basically you kind of play it, you know, kind of like a piano. I think that's how it works. I've never played one. One side is black keys, one side is the white keys or the equivalent. That's messed up. That's why it's kind of hard <laughs> to yeah. play on modern harps. I always thought the harp was like an instrument you see when you like pass away. <laughs> and you're transcending and it's a harp like the welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the case of heaven. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, like that. Yeah. 
Okay, you saying that though makes me feel a little better about the saxophone because yeah. we do have a concerto by Debussy. What? So, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's called Rhapsody. It's not technically concerto, but it's like, you know, it's solo saxophone and orchestra. Yeah, wow. it's really cool. It was actually a commissioned work by an amazing American um, female saxophone player. And it's just like the coolest addition to the repertoire, but it really doesn't get played. Well, well. I have one very suspicious story to add to that. Oh. Um, apparently, there was actually a Haydn concerto for double bass. Um, and the library where it was was burnt down before anyone could record it. <laughs> oh, no. oh, that is so sad. That Maybe he so changed sad. his mind and like committed some arson. Conspiracy. So oh my god, <laughs> no one must hear about this yeah, concerto. <laughs> but I'm sure, yeah, that, that could have been ours. That was the one. But like, yeah. how many concertos are there actually on Double Bass? Um, I mean, of course, there's like a whole lot of modern ones, yeah. but the standard four or five standard concertos. Yeah, they are still like more than right. viola though, right? Viola is just like Stamets, Bartok, Bolton, Bolton, yeah. Hofmeister. Hof oh, Hofmeister! Yeah. Oh, yeah. four. <laughs> but that would still mean every instrument here has more concertos than viola, right? Yeah. So we're not so at the bottom okay. of the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Second question: Which instrument is the hardest or most difficult to play? Mm. Shall I just start on this end? Mm. Yeah. Side? Because I see a lot of strings. I feel like it's yeah between the piano and the harp. <laughs> I'm gonna say the piano is not. I feel like okay. particularly beginner <laughs> piano is like super definitely the easiest to play. Sure, there's a big journey, but I really I, I don't think piano by any stretch of the imagination is the hardest instrument. If they can develop out. an app with like colors and lights, you know that app they advertise all the time where it's like is the key that lights up, press it. It's just like a game, like they've gamified playing the piano. Like Guitar Hero, but for piano. Essentially, yeah. 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 <laughs> there are instruments that are easy to learn how to play, but hard to perfect. Yes. And then instruments that are really hard to actually even like learn how to play, get a tone or whatever. Mm. But then, you know, it's a little bit easier to like be an expert, a master, basically. If you're talking about mastering, though, like every instrument's probably equally hard. Like at a really um, advanced, like high level, they all have their unique difficulties. So the fact that we don't have to worry about intonation, like if, if it's out of tune, it's not our problem. We call someone in to tune That's the piano. It's such a load off compared to like most other instruments. We have to tune That's to the piano. That's true. When and the piano's out of tune, we have to adapt. Im important point is that you can see all the notes, whereas like I look at a string instrument and I'm like, man, where, like, where is the range, it's just like there's four strings. Here. Is it? Is play. it? Actually play it yeah. now. Can you play? I can't play. Close. <laughs> it's a little bit sharp. A little bit sharp. It's close. Well, I tried to teach you guys and like, yeah. it, the harp seems easy. You think, oh yeah, you just pluck a string. But to actually do it properly to get a nice tone, there's a lot of prep that actually goes into it. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Wow. <laughs> Such a nice time. So nice. <laughs> no, but it actually is. So you, you did the right thing. Most people go in with the nails and stuff like that. Uh. Like that or, you know, or they'll play up or down or Still something. Or... <laughs> well, of course, I mean, it sounds wonderful yeah. either way, but to yeah. do it correctly. Plus, you know, you have the pedal, so it's not just hand to eye coordination, it's also feet. And then if you think about how we actually play, if you have music, and the conductor and strings, you have like three different things to watch at once. Okay. And you actually need to move your face to <laughs> look at all of it. It's two hands coordination. We don't have to coordinate our pinkies though, so. I will <laughs> say, like, we, we tried to learn the harp the other day for a video. It felt very not intuitive. Like, piano kind of feels a lot more intuitive. Like, you see it, they just bam. Yeah. The harp is kind of like, yeah, oh, cause really weird. Mm. I think also the posture was made me feel like I couldn't control my hands. Yeah. And my pinky kept going up. And then it felt so uncoordinated. Yeah, down, an elbow down. Like, oh. Yeah, I feel like you guys should have to say, you've learned all the yeah, instruments, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, what did you think about? We haven't learned the sax yet. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Next think, video. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm going to get beaten in this round by anyone, it would definitely be the harp because it's like, if you asked a lay person to play like a B flat, you can pretty much figure it out fairly easily on any instrument except for the harp, I think. Yeah, you'd never get it unless yeah. you know what, like, yeah, you'd, you'd never figure it out how to actually... <laughs> really? Here she go. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No, because you'd actually, you'd actually oh, need to move a pedal to get a B flat, so yeah. <laughs> like, I was really hoping to have a smart ass moment. It's actually quite good. Yeah. But like saxophone, I feel like is easy for the first half an hour. And then after half an hour, 
it gets really hard. What? So if I think of like my first lessons with a lot of my beginners, I can get someone from never having played a saxophone to an octave of notes and a couple of, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb or Hot Cross Buns or whatever folk song. Yeah. Fairly easily. Beyond that, you've got all these pinkies everywhere and it's a lifelong journey to play this thing in tune. It's one of those things where like, even now as a professional, I'm constantly doing practice, making sure I'm in tune across the range and then extending my range as well and going up into the altissimo register. So I think that saxophone gets this rep that it's really easy, but actually it's not. Uh, Whereas the double bass actually, it's almost impossible not to play in tune. Oh really? Awesome. Have you, really? Have you what? ever heard a bass player that doesn't play in tune? Yeah, I, I was gonna say, like, <laughs> I feel like double bass would be so hard to play in tune. Yeah, just I mean, by the nature of its size. I can't really hear it a lot of the time when it's rumbling down underneath the orchestra. <laughs> yeah. Harpers spend 90% of their time tuning and the other 10% playing out of tune. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, you have yeah, a You guys have to spend an hour tuning though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like 10 minutes at most. Yeah. Uh, 10 minutes of tune. 10 minutes so you, every time you practice, you got to tune 10 minutes. Yes. yes. That's so annoying. Sometimes I only practice for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I have okay. to say, I reckon, uh -huh. just for the, I've, I've been joking around, but you know, I have something oh, to say too. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, let's go. <laughs> Double bass, like at the beginning, it does sound pretty bad. With kids, you know, like, it can sound pretty, it's pretty hard to get a sound yeah. a lot of the time, like, because it's quite big and it takes a lot to get the string moving. Yeah. So if you're a little kid, like, it is harder, but I still don't think it sounds as bad as a beginner violin. That's a particular yeah. kind of torture. It's like, how much do you love your kids? I mean, even yeah, now. my parents were like, no violin for you. What else do you want? I'm yeah. not even joking. You can like be- Like the typical, like... <laughs> oh. Would you say violin out of all of us sounds the worst as a beginner? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean else is the hardest then? No, it just... <laughs> it's just a horrible <laughs> instrument, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the instrument, the kids can't help it. I feel like double bass would be hardest for projection though. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. There are a lot of amazing bass players that can play really well, but then trying to project on top of that is another battle. Yeah. And the intonation thing. Then how I do you mean, play it like with an orchestra? Like? I remember hearing like, like Bottasini or something. You had to like really listen for the bass. Oh, I mean like where you just really have to play right on the bridge oh, and yeah. you know, kind of play through the scratchy sounds if you want to be heard or like I'm doing a concerto next year that's being commissioned. So another one for us. Oh, nice. Um, but Is that five? That's number six. <laughs> number six. <laughs> <laughs> um, one at a time. But I'm going to just get some like some people think it's cheating, but some amplification. Because I just think, I mean, you want to hear the soloist. Because a lot of the time when double bass concertos don't have a full symphonic sound behind them. Like they'll have a little string orchestra with, you know, like five violins yeah. because you want to be heard. Yeah. But if, if we bring amplification into it, then we can actually have proper repertoire. That's true. That's fair. It's like classical yeah. guitar. They often have amps, right? Yeah, and I'm personally and for that. Oh, really? When do you hear the harp in an orchestra? When it's a solo. That's true. Or when it's like accompanying someone, like, you know, violin that's solo, true. and then that's it. I mean, obviously, you can you know hear the I harp. It, it is. It's the accompanist and the. That's good. Oh! oh! <laughs> the melody and the side, right? <laughs> All right, we had more prompts, so we decided for the last round, we're actually just going to go open ended, and everyone can say why the instrument's the best. Violin's the best. Okay, look, even like in terms of portability, you can't really carry a piano around. You always have to play other people's pianos and then you gotta hope it's in tune. Isn't that a kind of a good thing though? Yeah, you're, you're, you're arguing for me. Yeah, <laughs> right, <I think>, yeah. <laughs> no, but then it means- It's more personal. You have to like look for pianos when you go traveling. Isn't that really annoying? Oh yeah, practicing. Mm. Like if you're touring and you gotta like book little rooms yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Or find some Airbnb Versus with a where you piano. can just like walk practice the violin in the street, you guys don't need to book rooms or, <laughs> or seek shelter inside to do it. <laughs> I think I have done that, just like, I have like an audition coming up with some shit. there's no practice rooms, I just need South Bank, just by the practicing. <laughs> yeah, I've done that, legit. Oh. Yeah, and you can busk at the same time. I guess. You're paid while practicing. Yeah, and it doesn't get, you know, destroyed in the luggage thing like double basses do. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's actually really mean. That's, <laughs> <laughs> didn't that happen to you? Yeah. Oh, 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 I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. 
it was actually in always in the States, sorry, American people, but for some reason, every time. Wait, which airline? Which airline? <laughs> <laughs> they like threw the base in the hard case, neck first down the luggage chute. And it oh just, my. And it was like God. a solid case, but the neck completely snapped off. And um, like it just completely, it's amazing what they did. It was this one. Oh wow. So it's a completely new neck and everything. So threw it down. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it happen. Oh! I know. <laughs> I was like, ah! Oh. And I had an audition the next day. Oh. And I was just like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> That's it. So thanks for bringing up that traumatic memory. Painful memory. memory. <laughs> now I feel bad. I had no idea that actually happened to you. Yeah. yeah. It happens to cellos too, right? Yeah. I feel like cellos are more common. But they I've can heard take of like it on. I've two or three or something. Yeah, they can That's buy true. a seat. That's true, they can yeah. buy a seat for it. Oh, you can't buy a seat for... No, but probably the best thing about being a bass player, the one experience that made me think it was the best instrument mm -hmm. was when we were going on tour to Canary Islands, right? Already starting good. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the luggage allowance was 30 kilos for economy, but it was 35 or something for business. So the orchestra just booked me first class oh. so they could check in the bass. I was like... Oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> everyone's the back in the economy. How heavy is the bass? Well, that was the orchestra's bass. Okay. But yeah. mine in the hard case is under 32 because they travel a lot with it. It's like 30 kilos. Wait, 30 what? 30 kilos? Bass in the hard well, case. But it's yeah. mostly the case. It's right? mostly the case. Okay, it's like okay. 15. But that's still messed yeah. up, dude. Yeah, like I, I can't mean, even carry A you. harp on its own is like 34, 5, 6, 7 kilos, depending on which one you have. But like the hard case is another, like, I don't know, 100 kilos or something. Damn. Okay, yeah. but violin's still the best, so. Yeah. 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 In terms of transport, what, what yes. I agree yes. with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In terms of transport, yes. I'm not sure you I made any points just then about how the, yeah. the, how the violin is the best. All right, here we go, here it's we like go. It's like it doesn't get smashed in the luggage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you're just tricking us into saying bad things about our own instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how you'll win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe not all piano players would agree with me, but I feel like the fact that every time we play uh, on a different instrument, it's kind of like we have to learn how to make the instrument really sing, but I kind of like that sense of adventure as well, even if it's a not great piano, like provided that it can function well enough to do all the things it needs to do, like it's quite enjoyable for me to try and find ways to get different sounds and colours out of different instruments. And I also like the fact that if there's an issue with the instrument or if it's out of tune, it's literally not our fault. It's not our problem either. You can never leave it at a bar. You can never leave it on a bus. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, I've, I've shit. Left oh, he's left it on the before. train before. So it's just digging up each other's traumas. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like, oh, no. I left my violin on the train. Yeah. And I realized as I was nearly at the airport, I was a flight in one hour that my violin Ooh. was on the train. Did you get it back? I did. I was like, I made it on the flight with like one minute left. Wow. wow. Oh, that's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the history of my instrument just makes it by far the best. Like, Does it um, exist? What? It does make sense. It's an illusion. No I'm not here. <laughs> Adolf Sachs. Like, this guy is crazy. Like, please laugh. If you ever want a good time, like, look up his life story. Because, like, Adolf. he. Adolf Sachs. Yeah. Adolf Sachs. <laughs> and he literally almost died like five times before adulthood. He like fell in a river and almost drowned. He fell asleep in a room where they were varnishing furniture and the fumes almost killed him. Was this God's way of saying the saxophone shouldn't be born? Wait for <laughs> it. Sorry. He almost died. He makes it to adulthood, becomes an instrument maker. And then the rumor is he like went to some convention and brought this prototype, which everyone believes to be the first saxophone. But he was this really divisive character that apparently would just annoy people and piss people off. And someone kicked it across the room and destroyed it. So it's like a thing that like the first prototype of the saxophone was actually destroyed. And then he came back and he finally presented it. It's just this incredible story to get to this instrument and then where it's come from there. It's just so cool. It had to fight to be born. It <laughs> literally got kicked. They're like, it should fight. not exist. It should like, not <laughs> exist. It should not be here. And it literally is called the it's Devil's a Survivor. Like, that is a good story. Yeah. I it's, enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> it's this like wild story. What? Of this like hybrid instrument of like brass and like, you know, woodwind and a clarinet like mouthpiece and a reed. It's just like. Yeah, you know, that is true. It's is like it technically the cat dog brass of instruments. Wind? Woodwind. woodwind. It's woodwind because of the sound production, but, yeah. but it you just know. looks like. What I can say is for anyone out there that actually knows me, I always preferred the harp to the bass. <laughs> I got tricked into playing the bass. My life dream was to be a harpist. 
Um, look, it's fine. I'm okay with it now. Like, I've come to terms with it. This far in. All these budding but... aspirational double bass <laughs> watching this. They're like, no! I know, I've got to get it back for bassist. But I have, to, I have to be honest, we got to choose a string instrument in grade two at school. And I thought, great, the harp, that's the one. It's so beautiful and elegant and, well, this one's not all golden, but you know, the golden swirly, I was in the love. The crown at the, the top crown. And, yes, yes. And I, I just went and I was like, yep, I'll take the harp. Apparently they didn't have one, which was a bit rude. Um, <laughs> and so they said, well, the double bass is kind of similar because it's also really big. That's such a lie. That's probably, I was just going to say, that's probably like it's the only kind similarity. Of similar. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, okay. That is some <laughs> teacher who needed to fill out this string class. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but the best bit is, there were two other guys in my class that wanted to play, but there could only be one. So I had to win an arm wrestle in order to get what? to the base. We got up in front of the class, we were all like eight years old, and I beat two guys, just one after another. Um, <laughs> anyway. I, it did grow on me. Okay. I tried to get out of it. So is there anything good about the bass? <laughs> the thing I truly love about the bass is the lower register. Like, I mean, it just, it's beautiful. Like, and the best thing is playing barefoot and feeling the vibrations in your feet uh -huh. on the floor. Like when you play, the whole bass just resonates. It's very, it's a very nice thing. And if you've had like a rough night or not much sleep, and the next morning I can just imagine playing the violin would be rather grating on the ears. Playing the bass is actually very soothing. You know, like the, that, yeah. it's a very chill instrument in a lot of ways. I feel like I'm making up for the fact that I said I preferred the harp. Double bass is definitely the best. <laughs> I agree with Phoebe, no. <laughs> the unique thing about the harp, I mean, aside from like, its appearance and it's just wow effect when people see it. When they actually hear it, it's, it's very unique. It can create such a wide array of moods and kind of like the piano, I guess, but it's, it just has, a, I feel like a slightly softer tone and softer sound. And it's like, unless you're playing something really, really modern, it's yeah. gonna sound good on harp no matter what you do. Even if you're like making mistakes and stuff, unless you're, you know, like, <laughs> doing that, so modern. Like, I that's mean, I like, cool. I like that kind of stuff, but you know, that's not too pleasant to the ear. No? Oh, I just feel relaxed like, already. Yeah, yeah. Like, Same. yeah, yeah. dude, it's got this weird effect. <laughs> I feel like I'm in like a spa right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it creates this atmosphere just through the sheer number of notes played, and um, it does have actually quite big dynamic range, which I love. Yeah. Um, Can I do vibrato? She just did it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. I don't know, hold on. <laughs> Shake the whole thing. Hey. You can. Kind of. Oh, okay. The, the most beautiful thing about the harp, and you know, why do we have instruments, is the actual sound, the tone mm. quality, the tone color. I mean, for me, it's the prettiest thing there, so. You guys are advocating so well now, I feel bad. I feel like I have to go back on mine and start again. Plus, I mean, you know, there's a reason that it's like literally the first thing you hear before you enter into Heaven. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, that's when you know. It's such so, a good you know. <laughs> well, if you hear that, you know you're Yeah, it's like you're in a good place. Yeah. See, if you hear the saxophone, you're not in a good place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Nice. Solid. Wow. Any other points anyone want to add? I think the bass section are the coolest section in the orchestra. <laughs> okay, thank you for subscribing, guys. <laughs> I think saxophone players would make the most money per note. Well, even harpists. Yeah. We literally read books while other people play. Dude, yeah, but they come in. You play, you have so many notes, though. But do you guys have friends? I mean... <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> we have a gang. We're like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. the bass gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old yeah, gang, yeah, but yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like youth orchestra, and then there's a pianist. Yeah. They're just yeah, in the room just by the themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is practicing. Sometimes it's I'm, too hard. I'm not responding to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. I don't know where this conversation went. Comment on your opinion below. And once again, go check out these guys. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.